This video will review how to find the critical points of functions in one dimension. Okay, so let's remind ourselves f of a is the value of some function at the, val at the point uh, x equals a. f prime of a is the slope of the function f of x at x equals a. And f double prime of a gives us the curvature at x equals a. So if we want the set of all points a such that the first derivative at a is equal to zero, aka where we have uh, no slope, those are the set of points we would call critical points of this function. So in this type of loosely drawn graph that I have here, we have a point down here where the slope goes to zero. We have a point up here, at a, so this was a minimum where the slope goes to zero point up here a maximum where the slope goes to zero, another minimum where it goes to zero, and what we have here as in an inflection point where the slope is zero, all four of these would be critical points of the function f of x. So all four of the values of x where that occur would characterize the critical points of this function. Okay, so we mentioned that <clears throat> the first derivative of f of a is going to be zero if a is a critical point. So we classify this critical point by looking at its second derivative. So if the second derivative of f at that point is greater than zero, that means that the curvature indicates that this function is concave upward. And that gives us what we would call a local minimum. It's called local because we know that this is the lowest point in the local region of this function, but we don't know <clears throat> we don't know if it's the lowest point in the entire domain of the function. All right, if the second derivative is less than zero, that means that this function is concave downward around this region. So what we have is the highest point in the local region of this point. So that's a local maximum. And if the second derivative is equal to zero, as in the case of this type of inflection point or in some other cases, then we don't know. We can't classify the function. We can't classify that point yet. Uh, we need some more information from some higher order derivatives to classify it as either a minimum, maximum, or an inflection point. Okay, and then if we look in a region, the largest value of f of x inside that region is what we would call the global maximum. So in this case, the global maximum of this function, since it's going up right here, is probably further to the right there. And we have, and this local maximum is not the global maximum. Um, the smallest value in a, in a region for a function is called its global minimum. So th if this function keeps going up to the left here, then this point would be the global minimum, whereas this point is only a local minimum. So this is both a global minimum and a local minimum. So the candidates for the global maximum or global minimum of a function inside a region are the critical points inside that region and the minimum and maximum values of x for the region that you've defined. So let's do an example here. So let's say we have f of x equals 3x to the fourth plus 4x cubed minus 12x squared plus 6. What we want to do is find the minimum and maximum values of this function between negative 3 and 2. So the region we've defined here is from negative 3 to 2 inclusively. So the first thing we'll do here is find the derivative of this function with respect to x, and we're going to set that equal to zero to solve for our critical points. So the derivative of this function is going to be 12x cubed plus 12x squared minus 24x equals zero. So I can factor this polynomial. There's a factor of 12 and x inside every term, so I factor out a 12x. And then once I do that, it also factors as well into two terms, x minus 1 times x plus 2. All that equals 0. So solving for this, uh, for the roots, I get x equals negative 2, 0, and 1. All three values are where we can make the entire function equal to 0. And then if I look at the second derivative here, the second derivative is the derivative of the derivative. 
So that's 36x squared plus 24x minus 24. So if I look at my function here, I have the, the lowest value of my region, the largest value of my region, and three critical points all to evaluate to find what is, are the largest and smallest values inside this region. I don't need to check any other points because no other points are possible uh, for being the lowest or for being candidates for the global maximum or global minimum. Okay, at these points, I evaluate the function and the function evaluates to 33, negative 26, 6, 1, and 38. At these five, at these three critical points and two endpoints. The second derivative evaluates to 228, 72, negative 24, 36, and 168. So this point here is a boundary. Um, we note that it's not the global maximum and its derivative is not equal to zero, so it's not a local max or a local minimum, so it's just a boundary point. Um, this function here, this point here, was a critical point. Um, its second derivative is positive, so that makes it a local minimum. Um, it just so happens that of, out of all of the local, out of all the points that we have here, it's the lowest value of the function, so that makes it the global minimum as well. All right, this point, the second derivative is negative, making it a local maximum but it's not the biggest value inside the inside the region so that makes it just a local maximum this function this point has a positive second derivative making it a local minimum but it's not the lowest point on all uh, on the entire function so that's just local and our upper boundary point has the largest value of the function so that makes it the global maximum within this region from negative three up to two.